Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Streaming Alchemy. I'm John Mahoney, and on today's show, we're going to look at a way you can create complex motion graphics inside of vMix that you can use for lower thirds and other on-screen overlays. But before we get to that, I'd like to invite everybody, please, if you have any questions uh, that you'd like answered, just post them in the comments, and we'll get to them here live on the show. Also, if you'd like to join us live on the show, uh, you can call in. We have a, all the links posted in the show notes, and somebody from the studio will be happy to get you on. Okay, let me jump in here now and talk a bit about what we want to cover today. One of the things that I, I've heard a lot of people discuss over time is that vMix graphics are, you know, professional and quality, but they lack all the dynamic elements outside of sort of like moving boxes or moving text, but you don't get any of the sort of image moves or other composited types of things you can get with sort of higher end broadcast style graphics. But in looking at this, I realized that the reality is all the tools are there in vMix to do this already. And so on today's show, I wanted to, to sort of deconstruct a lower third that we put together here for a hypothetical esports uh, event, and show you step by step how we how we built this out as a motion graphic. So before I get into that, let me just jump over to the comments because we have a fair number coming across here. So let me see. So we have automation for vMix. Uh, thank you for thank you for joining us here. Always good to see you. Uh, battle for freedom. Battle. Thanks for joining us. We have uh, Dennis Van Dalen. Uh, so Dennis, thank you uh, for the comment. Hopefully this is something that a lot of people may find useful. Uh, you know, it's, it's something slightly different from the traditional vMix approach to lower thirds. So we have Rudy join us. Rudy, great to see you here. So thank you for joining. American Newscape saying hi, uh, uh, hello. And uh, let's see. Uh, we have uh, Samuel Nordvik. Uh, Samuel, hello, thank you. Let's see, we have we have Bill Mew. Uh, Bill, thank you again for joining us here. Uh, we have uh, Latopia uh, uh, with uh, Bonjour. So Latopia, thank you. And we have Vangelis Tremopoulos. Uh, so thank you for joining us, uh, Vangelis. And we have Mike. Uh, so Mike, Mike Abe, thank you for thank you for joining us here. Good to have you. Okay, so what I want to do is let me start by showing you first what it is we're going to be building here. And then I can go into the deconstruction. So if we switch over to the vMix screen, so this could be, you know, our main camera shot of people that are in an esports competition. And so what I've done is I've created a lower third here that's composed of multiple elements. I have the ability in this lower third to be able to sort of change the uh, details around, you know, who we're focused on and their overlay information. I can do things like an underlay where if I want to th do things like individual scores for players or whatever, that can change and then have that sort of, you know, just go away if I don't want it. So this is, is really as a construct all the elements that you would normally have in a, in a motion graphic overlay. So let's get into how we uh, break this apart. So probably the first thing to look at then is, let's look at the preset I built in vMix for this. And there are, are multiple parts to this. So I'll sort of break it down. So the thing that we talked about already was sort of the camera. So I'll sort of go through it tab by tab, which has everything in it. So in this case, we just have this one camera shot. So it's, it's nothing. I can actually pull the lower third off. Uh, we have this one camera shot here. So, but if you had multiple cameras that this could be, you know, how you'd set that up. The next thing is I have sort of these little player shots. Now this could be pre-canned graphics. So this could be something where if you, you know, did some compositing ahead of an event and you had all the players in there, this could be something from there. It could be little cameras on each player's monitor to, to give you sort of a close-up face shot of them. But so we have all the player videos and that's what we use when we composite out that uh, graphic on the side of the lower third. Uh, 
Then we have the lower third assets. And the lower third is really just a layered composite. So we have a motion graphic of the sort of title bar with all the moving elements in it. Uh, and we are actually cutting a hole out in that using a mask for doing the uh, insert of the player videos. Then we have what we call sort of an underlay. So this would be where the scores come in. So behind the scores, behind the, the main lower third, we can pop up or we'll bring down the scores. And that's what we have as that layer. And then on the third piece here, we have the traditional elements that would go in from VMix GT title. And that's where these come in. So these are, it's a GT title with no backdrop that just has a graphic, a name, uh, an age, and a handle, a gamer tag that they use. And the way we do this is we have these all composited in a layered input. And that's this last thing, which has the lower third for the team members. So the mass, I mentioned we use a mass to cut out the little globe on the side. So for the globe, we're using this first mask, which is basically as that, that globe sits there and spins, we want it to open up the center of it so we could put the image behind. So we're using this mask for that. Now for the players, we are using uh, a, a full circular mask, which sort of would line up with this, though obviously they're very different sizes. And the way we handle this is that as opposed to applying this mask to each player individually, what we do is, jumping to the next one, we apply it to a mix. So we take the mix and apply a mask to it. Now, any element that I have in this mask, uh, in this mix, will automatically get masked. So this is what lets me switch the players. I could put ads. I could do anything I wanted that I wanted to inject in there, and it's just going to have that mask applied to it. So that's a very useful way to work with the mix and multiple sources if you want to to do specific types of masking. And, you know, the, the other mix we have is for the underlay, you know, that, that thing with the scores. If you wanted to do things with advertising or with uh, different types of information sets that you may want to do along the way, you could actually just mix that you can use to control what's going behind, well, actually a third, because we have the main mix, to control what's going on behind the motion graphic. And then we just have, you know, a few extra things we threw in here. And this is for these mixes, because we're layering them. If you wanted to have something that would be transparent, we just have to have a transparent input. So in the mix, you can just say, okay, hide it. You know, just put a transparent thing there and the mix goes away in a layered stack. So that's what we have there. So the interesting place to jump into this uh, is really down here in the input 11, which is the team member composite. And so we'll, let's, let's, let's sort of dig in to that one there. So this you can see is uh, the exact composite that we had where we have a graphic uh, coming in, uh, the, the text for this, the motion image, and then the players behind that. And the way we're doing this is basically through these layers here. I have uh, the underlayer, which is when I mentioned we, we would use for doing the, the scores and other things. Then I have the player insert. Now this player insert is a mix. So whatever I put in the mix, I have now the ability to, to switch it. So I can go and put play one, two, three, four, I add new players, all of that without any, any extra work. As long as I put that in that mix, we're good. And what I have to do, because in that mix, we applied a mask, we, uh, we then have to go and position this. So if, if I go through this, what you're, what you're really going to start to do here now is I'm going to go and uh, zoom it down and slide it over. So this thing fits right under here. And so now not only do I have the mask applied, but I have the size and position applied to that mix. So anything I put in that mix is going to show up here. And I just have to take a moment to note something. This is uh, the vMix uh, 26 beta version 20. 
they have finally put copy and paste in layers. <laughs> So now if I needed to duplicate all the position information from one layer to another, no more taking out your, your phone camera, snapping pictures and then scrolling and putting them all in on another layer. Now you have copy and paste. Just a, a quick aside, but something that actually made me smile this morning when I saw it. So, uh, but that's in there now. And so this is, this is how, when we work with that layer, we, we have the ability now to just insert it right where we want it. And, you know, the same is, is true now. We have the motion element, which uh, if, let me just see if I can call that up because I really haven't talked a whole lot about that. I'll do that right after this. And then on the top, we have a, a GT title with all the text information. So that's really how we, we stacked up the layers and we positioned things as we needed them. So let me just jump over to, uh, let's see. Take this element right here. So when you're looking at this, a uh, couple of things, and this is these, some of these are just aesthetic things that when I was thinking, there's, a, there's an approach I took. So let me, let me go up here and we'll turn the mask off for a second. So when I took this, this is just an image with a turning globe here. And what I was looking for when I, I was sort of searching for an element is I wanted something that when I masked it, the edges of it would have sort of dynamic motion to it. So you can see when I put this, uh, let's see, it's the uh, globe mask. When I put this in, you can see how everything along the edge of this, uh, maybe actually if we, we just zoom in to take the output from vMix here, you can start to see it. Uh, you can see how this whole edge here has this swirling pattern. And that's what I want. So it, when you do these types of compositing of elements, look for certain attributes that sort of appeal to you and you can mask them into it in different ways that could be really, really effective. And again, because these are layers, you, you can stack things. So I could have taken these, say these sparkly elements that are floating around were an alpha channel. I could do that as an overlay on top of something else. So you can add dynamic elements as components. And so what you effectively are using this input for is as a compositor, a true like stacked layer compositor for graphics where Photoshop it one layer on top of another with different parts transparent. And so when we have this in place, this is giving us that sort of very straightforward way to cut this out. So let's go back. And now I want to talk a little bit about how we're using the, uh, the player element here. So if I switch to this, I'm going to sort of cut this over here. What I have here is every time that I select a player, what I'm doing is, if you, you look here, I'll go to player one. So it's taking and moving the player that was in the little circle to the side. That's putting the preview for that mix. And it's taking and applying the mask to the new player. And I'm just doing that through uh, some API calls and I'll, I'll, I'll go through that at the end. So when you have this set up, you now can switch people in just through here. And to be honest, I could take and put any graphic in here. So uh, let's just for amusement's sake, I could take and put my main camera in there. We'll put that in there. And so now you can see here, but you'll also notice if I look at the, let me sort of pop out the lower third. Uh, well, this will screw it up, but I'll, I'll pop out the, the lower third here. Uh, if I go and uh, switch this back to the main camera here, you can see that's just cut out now and sized and everything. So, you know, I don't have an issue where, let me sort of put this into behind it. So now you can see this is just a, a, a direct cutout. So any graphic I put in here now will automatically work. Any video, any image, whatever I want, now automatically trims itself. And you can see in the mask, I had a very slight, uh, fade sort of around the edges where I feathered it out. And this gives us that nice separation between the two where in here you can sort of see the edges of this image 
floating around here. And I, I like that because it creates something that's a little softer and feels a lot more organic visually. So just another thing to, to keep in mind as you're constructing this. So all of these things here are very straightforward uses of mass sizing, resizing mixes. And we, to, to just sort of round this out with the other piece, what we have for, let me pull this off of here. Uh, if I sort of cut this in here, uh, let's see, can I zoom something in? So for things like the under, you know, under layer, which had scores or other things, this is just a stacked layer of uh, a GT title that has all this information in it and a semi-transparent element that when it's behind here, you can see it's, uh, you know, it, it shows sort of, but you still have everything floating above it. So again, a, just a composite stack here for the backend elements as well. So let me talk just a little bit, some of the, the basic stuff that, that we do. So inside these overlays for the GT title, I wanna just jump in and show how we set that up. So I'm gonna open up Excel here and see if I can, give me a second here, Let me jump in and get to Excel. Cause what I'm doing is I'm reading all this information out of an Excel spreadsheet. So let me see if we can, I'll slide this over to this screen so we can see it. So all of the information that I'm using for that, the text in that lower third is just laid out here. Sort of the names, the tags, we have the age, this is the stuff we're using for the scoreboards. And the other thing that we have here is I am using a URL to populate the image that we have over on the side of, so that little graphic that I have over on the side of the lower third, that's the URL of, you know, sort of URI, because it's a file identifier. This is the URI of the PNG file we're using for that. So if you'll notice right over here, as you look, if I go and swap between players, each one has their own little logo and gamer tag popping up over there. So this is this is something that, you know, when we set this up now, you are pulling that all dynamically out of an Excel spreadsheet. And you know, again for completeness, the the way we handle this is through Data Sources Manager. So we come in and you know, if you look at the settings, I'm going in and I'm naming this, it's the Excel spreadsheet. So I just call the name of the team rosters and I'm using the first row as the column names and the sheet name is the second piece. So I think this is just called team A. So this is how we pull all the information in. And as we do normally, all of the stuff just gets mapped inside of the input with the lower third, you know, the GT title in it. So when you come into that, what, the way I did this is just, I did a right click and said title editor. And so I have the age text and I go to data sources. And if I came in here and said, okay, I'm gonna go to team rosters. The tab is team A and the column I want is age. And so now that information is mapped appropriately. And if I change anybody, so you can see it's taking whatever row is selected so if I come in here though and pick another row, cause I have like four rows in here, you'll see the information will just change to reflect the row that we have. Uh, so this is all it's doing. So we're just taking the selected row, which is, you know, allows us from an automation point of view to do this pretty easily. And uh, we do those maps. So we do that for the full name. We do that also for the image. And so the image is, it's going there and saying, the taking the column team logo, and that's just the URI and title designer actually does that fetching and mapping. So very, very cool the way it, way it can handle that. But so now that layer with all the GT title elements now can still be pretty dynamic and interesting. We're still pulling things together from multiple sources, not just inside text, but also outside images. So some, some pretty cool ways to do this construction wise. And the way we do this from an automation side, uh, 
is 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 pretty straightforward. So let me just each one of the players that we have, we go over to Visual Studio over here. For each one of the players, we have a shortcut that we set up, uh, which is a, a, a script start dynamic. And it has these two API function calls in it. So the first thing we're doing is we're saying, take input. So in this case, since this is player one, that player one is over in input two, three, four, and five. Those are where we have the player videos. So I'm taking the, the correct input and I'm doing it as a transition using a cross zoom into mix one. Now, again, the confusing things in vMix are the zero base, zero index and one index, different things, different times. So your main, in, your main mix in vMix is mix zero. So that's sort of, if you don't put a mix, it just defaults to mix zero. Then the other mixes are mix one, two, three, and now with vMix uh, 26 all the way up to 15, I think. So you have a, a lot more mixes. So all I'm doing is saying, do a cross zoom using the video for player one, which is the input two, into mix one. And so I do that with a button push. And then I'm saying in my data source for uh, the team roster with the, the team names, I want you to go to uh, row zero, which again, this is confusing. That's the, the first row inside of uh, my Excel sheet. So you go to that row. And so to change this, all I'm doing is I'm changing the input for the player. So players two will have input three and they'll have row one, which is the second row zero one uh, in the Excel file. And that's really all we're doing here. So nothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary scripting wise to do this. So before I sort of wrap this up and start to you know push us into more of the question side let me just jump over we have a few more people have joined us so we have Hakan uh, Foss from Sweden Hakan thank you for joining so we have JP Nodet uh, JP uh, thank you for the all oh, everyone's welcome anytime late early definitely uh, enjoy having you here so thanks JP uh, so we have uh, Kevin Gamble uh, is coming in and he's asking, is that built a uh, lower third or an imported preset? So the lower third that we have for this, Kevin, is a, a group of things. So I use uh, story blocks to get uh, uh, graphics and images. Uh, and so I, I, I got a, a lower third video from story blocks, which was the lower third motion with the globe. And then we cut that up and position that in. But everything in here, even though it acts like a lower third, you know, I can just pop it on and off the screen as a single entity. That's, you know, that's just because you can do that with any input. And we, we did the compositing in the input for the different elements, but none of that was sort of standard presets. That was all stuff that was built and could be totally customized to whatever you want. Uh, so, Let's see. So we have uh, Battle for Freedom uh, is saying fighting the urge to replicate this template from my program. Well, Battle, you are you are more than welcome. Uh, you know, I'm I'm happy to share anything I can. I can't actually give you know motion graphics away because you know I don't have I, I have the rights to use them, but not to uh, to to share them. But I I will post this uh, preset up with sort of still images from all the motion instead of the motion images. So, uh, and yeah, I'll post it up there in GitHub so everybody can download this and, and play with it, but it has all of the elements included that we, we did here. So we have uh, Joey Otu uh, from the UK. Joey, thank you again for, for joining us here. And we have uh, Hosue, uh, hopefully I'm saying your name correctly, uh, Natima. So, uh, Hoshua, thank you for joining us uh, from the Democratic Republic of Congo. It is, it is great that we have a, a community here that spans so many different places. So, thank you. So, that is really everything that I want to cover. This is a slightly shorter show, but I thought you know, there were some interesting elements in here uh, that could be applied in lots of different ways. But what I'd like to do is sort of 
open this up in the post show so we can talk about any other things you were with you know thinking about applying for this and also i can talk about some of the things i was thinking for for doing ads with this and uh how you could, could put that in for sponsors and other things so uh why don't we why don't we call this a wrap for the main show uh I will say we are not going to be here next week here in the U.S. Uh, Thursday is Thanksgiving and uh, everybody here is going to just be taking a long weekend. So indulge us for taking the, the week off. Uh, but we will be back the week after with another show. Uh, and for everybody that is able to hang around, the post show will start in a few. But if you can't, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next two weeks. Take care, everyone. Like this hello welcome back so this when i was doing this this was you know sort of an an, an interesting element that i was trying to introduce because i i know this is something i've i've heard a lot about where people are like oh why doesn't gt title designer like have motion and all the other stuff and as i started to think about it, i realized that vmix really has all the key elements in place uh to do this and it's it's really it could even be more confusing to to do it all inside of gt title uh so uh i think doing it with gt title elements and an input with stack layers and masks and other things to do cutouts can be really really powerful and let you do a lot of custom branded things so, uh, so Artum, uh, so hopefully I, I have been told we see, I, I have a team that, that does the translation for me. I'm told this is, this is hello. So hello, Artum. Thank you for joining us here. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, so when, when I was thinking about the show, one of the other things I was looking to add, but really just ran out of time around was how could we inject ads into this? And I realized that a lot of this stuff could could be done the same way. You know, you you could take and have a set of ads that you would want in a lower third or any type of overlay, and you could actually do this around sponsors now, where you can still have something going on. And either you could replace the graphic, like that little circular image that we had in the lower third, you could just replace that and put something else up that was a full ad. You could do things that would augment. So you could sort of sit there and, because remember we had an underlay layer and an overlay layer. You could sit there and say, okay, in this underlay, I'll go and do stuff that's sort of small motion graphics uh, carved out uh, that I could use to do sponsor ads so even while you're doing the show now you could have sort of that whole under part below the like if, if we just let me see if i can pull the lower third up here for a second so if you uh if you look at that there's a whole under segment uh here let's see that yes yeah, so this whole piece under the lower third you could actually take and make that an ad space and do that as an underlay where you sit there and go okay now I'm going to swap out maybe my scores or other things. I'm going to push this in here and make this into something that I can now use as a uh, an ad space. And it would, could work identically where you just use keys to say, which ad do I want on there? And uh, put that in a third mix, uh, you know, sort of a, a fourth mix in here because we use three for the main mix and the, the two other mix. Just put that in a fourth mix and set this up and stack that in your layers. And then now all the stuff becomes something you can automate and control. So I was just, I, as you think about ways to apply this, you know, sort of think about how do you want to use all this space? And, you know, if I, if, if I just took off the, uh, you know, the, let's see, do I have this here? If I just took off the, the lower third piece or zoom it out here, you know, so now you can sit there and go, there's a, there's a lot of space to work with here and definitely be something that uh, you, know, you could use for sponsors or ads. Anything to, uh, to help you know, monetize some of the things you're doing. So, so let's see, we have, uh, let's jump back. Uh, so we have 
Aziz has joined and says, hey, everyone, hoping to see VMAX 26 this year. So I have to tell you, Aziz, if you're interested in using it, I think that this, this latest version seems reasonably good. Uh, if you if you really want to give it a try, I would definitely recommend that. I think it's certainly at the point where if you don't want to use it for production, which I probably, you know, I can get away with that here because I'm doing this as a technical show. But uh, if you were doing this, you know, commercially for somebody else, you may not want to do it. But I would definitely start to move things into it and see how you may want to change those uh, for to take advantage of some of the VMX 26 stuff. And of course, just having copy and paste in layers. I can't tell you. It's uh, I mean, I had I had a friend who who basically said, uh, it, it it's it, it's amazing that you know something that was sort of in DOS 1.1 finally just made it to VMix, uh, 26. So uh, I as a product developer, I I understand that things are never as easy as they seem. But that's one of those big glaring things that now that they have it, it's going to make a, a huge difference for a lot of people but especially for things like we just showed today, where if you want to carve out different areas, put these different masks up and use these mixes in there across multiple uh, different sort of images, uh, having the, the ability to copy from one layer to the next and have these things mask out is incredibly powerful and just saves a lot of manual work and the, the mistakes you make where you, you're missing, you know, uh, a minus versus a plus or all the other stuff that you do and you know the effort to create layers that have specific crop uh zoom and uh positioning information so that should uh that should definitely be something but i i think you should uh you you should definitely uh you should definitely think of using it and get started with it and yeah it, it's it's one of those things and again i i don't ever want to criticize somebody who's developing a product i I know personally how difficult that can be, but I, I do, I do appreciate the, uh, you know, the thought that it, it, it's something that would have been really great to have in the earlier versions of VMix. So, so thank you for that, Aziz. But, uh, so if you have any other questions about what we did, or we just want to talk about things you may be interested in for, uh, you know, for applying this to, and, you know, I, I'd be happy to discuss that in more detail here in the after show. Uh, but I, I did want to talk a bit about sort of our plans through the end of the year. Uh, so everybody's aware. So like I mentioned, we're going to be taking next week off. Uh, we then will have four shows up until Christmas here, which we celebrate here at Streaming Alchemy. And so that will give us four shows up to there. So I think the 23rd, will be our last show this year. We will take the following week off for, you know, basically as a recoup recovery. We will probably have one more show at the beginning of the year, and then we're going to go sort of off air for a couple of months to sort of tool up and get ready for season four. So a lot of new things we want to do in that. Uh, and one of the things that, you know, we've been talking about here that, that we're, we're actually really excited about is integrating more TriCaster-based shows in along with the, the, the vmix focus shows, but talk about this with automation more generally. So things that we started with Node.js this year, if you, you remember that, Node.js is not tied to an individual platform. So this means you can start to create automation processes that work TriCaster, vMix, OBS. And we want to really start to talk more in season four about how all of these different elements can work together in a single production. So you think much more about uh, how do you create the optimal environment for a production as opposed to trying to do everything in a single tool and sometimes overtaxing that tool and making it more awkward to use. So things, if you think about things like OBS, OBS is a great compositing engine. Uh, so if you turned around and said, I want to take these four elements and composite them, like say they were guests in something and I want to build them in a green room, you could do that in OBS and send that back via NDI into vMix or the TriCast or anything like that. So we're trying to, in our next season, move forward in that 
also, we want to do this where we talk about building out full productions, where as opposed to today, where we talk much more around individual elements and different things you can do. We'd like in season four to really start to focus more on how would you build out an entire hybrid event production or virtual event production uh, from you know, everything from the graphics to all the different components that could be involved to bringing in remotes to uh, you know bringing in SRT cameras, all of those elements, virtual sets, other things that sort of would go to build that out. This is where we really want to focus in season four. So it's going to take us some time off here to pull all that together and get that all started. But that's basically our schedule. So we think probably you know, the end of February, beginning of March is when we'll pop on after the holidays again. But uh, we will still be in touch. We have a couple of things planned for that downtime that we want to put up as well. And we'll probably do those as a couple of premieres that we'll, we'll have in place for that. But uh, so let me, Aziz has another comment here. He says uh, he wished there was uh, more uh, uh, matting possibilities in VMix. Uh, so for example, cropping things or, or masking. So cropping things in circle or free uh, masking tools. So the thing in vMix itself, I, I agree, it, it's fairly limited. Uh, what we did here, though, if you uh, if you remember when we set when we set up the the preset, we actually took images that were masks, and uh, you know, so we just built them in Photoshop, you know, 1920 by 1080 white and black with gradients, you know, sort of gray gradients between them to create feathering. But that was how we created the mask. So we do have the flexibility to do any type of mask that we want. So, you know, when I talked about using that space underneath the, uh, the lower third, I could actually take in Photoshop and just copy that and create a mask. It's just that area and then put whatever I want under that. So there are different ways you can do masking using outside elements, but inside of vMix, you know, it is, it's cropping is really just a rectilinear thing. So you, you can do that uh, only to that extent. I mean, to your point though, is what I'd really love though, is the ability to control things like crop size and position through automation. Because I think that would add a whole new level of powerful capabilities into here that don't exist. And especially when you tie this in with some of the automation we've, we've looked at in the past, things like Node.js, where you have a lot more processing control. I, I would love to see you know, that get in there so I could start to, to do some pretty cool things. And there's, there's a lot of simple things you know, that, that you look at and say, gee, I just wish... I wish they were there. And hopefully like this cut and paste is the first of a series of sort of vMix basics that vMix may, may want to do to to sort of level that up. But again, I know a lot of these things, especially around things you do dynamically, uh, could be inefficient. And there may be lots of technical underlying reasons why things that we would look and say, oh, that's simple, why don't we do that, may not be there. So, you know, I definitely cut them slack on that as well. So. So let's see. Uh, all right. So I don't. Are there any other questions here? Because uh, you know, I want to make sure we we cover everything. I know this was has been a fairly short show, so I don't want to wrap it up prematurely. But uh, all right then. So I think we are probably uh, at the break point here. So I appreciate everybody hanging around for our post show hangout. Uh, this in some ways is, is as much fun to me as the main show. So I, I enjoy the interactivity here as well. So thank you for that. Uh, oh, so uh, Aziz is asking, could you please do a show about mixer inputs? Uh, yes, we can. And uh, actually, this may be something uh, we could do before the end of this year. So there, there are lots of different things that... Uh, I would definitely like to do with that. So let me uh, let me think a little bit about how we could integrate that, but I will definitely do a show on that and soon. So thank you, Aziz. That's a good one. So, all right. So we'll, we'll call this a wrap for today. Uh, as I said, we won't be here next week, but we will be here in two weeks, which is December 2nd, uh, with our next show. Uh, and maybe that can be a surprise for Aziz. <laughs> we'll see where we get with that. 
but uh, we'll keep that in mind as one of the possibilities. So thanks, everyone. I appreciate you being here. Be safe if you're in the U.S. and you're celebrating Thanksgiving. Have a great holiday. Uh, spend time with family and enjoy yourselves. Uh, this, is, uh, this has been a, a real blessing to me and uh, something I'm really grateful for uh, with having this show and this community. So thank you all. Take care.